Downright cozy. I'll get the luggage.
This is Dr. Lomas's, isn't it? I'm Janet Smith. I'm sure the doctor is expecting me. You're Janet. The doctor has talked about you so much. Welcome home, my dear. This is Mr. Hastings. I'm afraid the doctor didn't expect him, but I took the liberty of inviting him. Oh, now, don't tell me. Why, what a surprise this will be for the doctor. Come in. Come in. I'm Mrs. Merchant, the housekeeper. Jacob, bring the bags in. You know where Miss Smith goes and put Mr. Hastings in the blue room. Brandy's looking little fella. Now hurry up, dear. I'm hungry. All right, darling. I'm just hanging up your things, miss. Is that all right? Thank you. You're Maggie, aren't you? Yes, miss. Do you want to change? The bath is that door. Oh, yes, thank you. Maggie, will you help me? Oh, yes, miss. Thank you, I'll finish. Oh, 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 what happened? Oh, I'm so sorry. That's all right, Maggie. Take your time unpacking. Oh, it isn't that, Miss. It's just very late. The moon will be rising any minute now. The moon will be rising? What does the moon have to do with anything? Before I came to work in the manor house, I promised Mother I would always be home before the moon rose. You mean you walk home to the village every night? Yes, miss. Why don't you sleep here? Oh, I wouldn't dare. Sleep here? Nobody in the village would. Why not? Well, now, Maggie, why on earth do you object to sleeping here? I'm sorry, Miss Janet. Mrs. Merchant said she didn't want any more foolish gossip. Come on, Janet. I'm coming. Well, Maggie, we can straighten this up in the morning. You may go now. Oh, thank you, miss. Merchant, I can't get over the behavior of that girl. You mean your maid, Maggie? Yes. Oh, there's no understanding these village people. They're shockingly backward. She was absolutely terrified. I've never seen anything like it before. Yes, what is this business about the moon rising? Oh, it's a lot of local nonsense. Really, I must apologize for that silly girl. You'd be shocked if you knew some of the superstitions of our little village. And the doctor? What's he got to say about all this? Oh, well, the doctor wants none of this. He's too busy working night and day with his patients. Why, he wouldn't listen to silly stories. What are these stories? Oh, they go back a long way. Now, mind you, I'm not a local woman. I come from near Liverpool. Oh, my, there's the doctor. Well, I guess it's near midnight, so I'd better go and take care of the champagne.
Janet, my dear. Doctor. Doctor, this is George Hastings, who came along to celebrate my 21st birthday with me. And this is my guardian, Dr. Lomas. Glad to meet you, sir. How do you do? I know you two will like one another. You have to. You see, George and I are going to be married. Married? I imagine that comes as quite a surprise to you, sir. Surprise? <laughs> yes, rather. Come, we'll go into the sitting room. Children. One moment they are little girls playing with dolls, and the next they're introducing strangers as their future husbands. We didn't ourselves know until last week. Oh, Janet, my dear, your life was planned with so much loving care. I cannot help feeling I should have been consulted before this decision. Oh, we kept our engagement a secret from everyone until we could tell you. Young man, I consider you in this instance as rash and ill-advised as Miss Smith. She's an orphan. That's just it, sir. Dr. Loomis, I owe you so much, and I don't want to sound ungrateful, but even if you don't approve of George... I... What Janet is trying to say is, we didn't come here just to celebrate her birthday, nor for that matter, to tell you we're getting married. There's another reason. Such as? After Janet and I are married, we're not going to accept one penny from you. Is that a fact, Janet? Yes. And George and I hope you will always allow us to consider you our good friend. But we have agreed never to use any of your money. My money? <laughs> All the money I have, my dear, that was what I can scrape together from my medical practice. Now it's my turn to spring a surprise on you two. You, Janet, were never living lavishly on my money, but on your own. You, my dear, are an heiress to an estate and a sizable fortune. This house and the land around it for miles belongs to you. Although your father's will provides that I may live here for the rest of my days. Are you serious? Oh, money is never a joking matter, my dear. That's a point rich and poor agree on. What about you, Mr. Hastings? Well, I must admit, I have no objections to money. I'll try to accustom myself to it. I suppose you wonder why I haven't told you this before. Well, I've seen money spoil so many young lives. And I wanted to make sure that your future husband would be interested in you and not your money. I'm very happy for you both. Oh, almost midnight. Paul Mass. This was laid away, my dear, the day you were born. Well, now, don't expect a speech from me. Happy birthday, Janet, dear. May life be sweet and happy for you and for those you love. Thank you. Happy birthday, darling. Oh, it's nothing, my dear. Here, take mine. A broken glass means good luck. Of course, so it does. Well, so it did, didn't it? And you know, it's odd, Doctor. I was a little frightened of what you were going to tell us. I'm afraid, my dear, there's something more that I must tell you. What do you mean? Well, I'm duty-bound by an old promise to reveal to you certain facts on your 21st birthday. I'll explain in the morning. In the morning? Yes, why can't you tell us now? I'd rather leave it until tomorrow. You see, it's an old story, and another couple of hours can't make any difference. Besides, I, I, I'm very tired, and... And I have to go over some old documents just to refresh my memory. And now, my dear, and you, young man, you finish the champagne. And if you'll permit me, I'll go to bed. Beautiful bride to be. All this and money too. Before breakfast. Say, how about my getting some bacon and eggs for you? Mrs. Merchant went to town to do her marketing. That sounds fine. That bacon looks good. You know, George, I can't seem to get a bit of gossip out of Maggie. Every time I bring up the subject of the man and the moon or whatever was bothering her last night, I, she just freezes up like a clam and cleans faster. I'll bet I know the grim facts the doctor intended to tell you today. He's going to tell you about the taxes and the servant problems involved in this house. And I bet they're grim facts. Do you want to help me explore it? You know, this is the first house I've ever owned. 
Not on an empty stomach. Is food the most important thing in your life? Napoleon said a man travels on his stomach. What's good enough for Napoleon is good enough for Hastings. I found something curious. I've been taking the dimensions of this room. There's a large space unaccounted for, even allowing for the thickness of the walls. A secret room? Oh, George, really? No, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. This is a very old house. I wouldn't be surprised if this house didn't date back to medieval times, at least of the Tudor period. And in those days, no self-respecting house was complete without a secret room and secret passages. Where do you think it might be? Well, if I'm right, it's somewhere in this wall. You know what I hope we find? Treasure? No. A bathroom with enough real hot water in it for a good shower. I give up. Whatever the secret, it isn't in this room. What did you do? Looks as if it could have been used for some kind of chemical laboratory at one time. Look at the dust. It hasn't been used for years. <clears throat> oh, I'm afraid we've allowed our curiosity to overcome our good manners. This room is no great secret, though it has a certain interest, and it has been written up in several of the local chronicles. Tell us about it. There's not much to tell. Some old legends. It's supposed to have been used as a hiding place for Jesuits at the time that they were forbidden in England. Why all this equipment? Janet, your father used this room as his laboratory. It hasn't been used since his death. My father? I have to tell you why I insisted that you'd come here for your 21st birthday. George, and I speak to Janet alone. Oh, doctor, I want George to hear whatever you have to say. I understand. But if I'm to keep my word to your father, a word which I gave him before you were born, my dear, you must hear this alone. Then, if you still wish to tell George... George, I can't marry you. What on earth are you talking about? You must go. Go? And forget me. But why are you talking like this? What have I done? You love me? Please don't ask me anything. Just go. No. You love me. We're going to be married. I can't marry you. Now look, darling, there, there must be a reason. Now tell me why. Don't ask me. Janet, I want to help you, but I can't unless you trust me. 
Look, Dr. Lomas, I've had enough mysteries. Now I want some answers. What's the matter with Janet? This is your secret. Do you want me to tell? Perhaps it's for the best. She'll come with me. to the family, too. Janet's family. It predates the house by centuries. centuries of the family of Jekyll. Knights, soldiers, priests. He's here. Dr. Henry Jekyll. He knoweth not what he did. May his tortured soul rest in peace. Amen. Not the Dr. Jekyll. He was my father. You have to understand, a finer man than Dr. Jekyll never lived. We were medical students together. I was the dull plodder. But Jekyll was brilliant, with a mind approaching genius. He was independently wealthy. He did some really distinguished work. In the world of science, he was rated as one of the coming men. Then, then he became completely absorbed in a strange experiment. He practically withdrew from the world, gave up what practice he had, and forgot his friends. But Janet, always remember this. Your father's experiment in the early stages was intended as a blessing. See, his theory was that all men are part evil and part good. And his desire was to separate these personalities. Wasn't that close to a man trying to be God? Certainly. He developed certain drugs that had a most remarkable effect on the mind and body of a human being. Formulas which he destroyed before his death. As a result of using himself as a guinea pig in this experiment, battle within his own body and soul reached a climax. And Hyde went out. His mind would blank out when the vicious Hyde took over. Then when he reverted to the respectable Dr. Jekyll, his recollection of what Hyde had done was nothing but a vague, distorted nightmare. He wasn't even aware that physically he'd become a monster. Oh, I still shudder when I recall that face, like some perverted mask of evil out of a legend of horror. Then, then you saw him as high? Once, at the very last, just before the mob caught him. I swear to you, Janet, he never was aware of what he had done. You were hardly more than a child at the time. You were too young to remember. No, I, I remember. There, there was something in the papers about it. Mm. The press, press had a Roman holiday. You know, when the mob finally caught up with them, they almost tore him to pieces. The villagers broke into this tomb and drove a stake through his heart. The only safeguard, according to ancient tales of witchcraft, that keeps a werewolf from rising out of the grave when the moon is full to hunt for human blood. And 
Now you know why I can't marry. I'm his daughter. Why, you little idiot. If you think I'm going to let an old wives' tale that happened 20 years ago. Suppose I pass it on to my children. Why should it be hereditary? Doctor, what should I do? I have absolutely no proof that this madness is hereditary. On the other hand, if I'm to be honest, I have no proof that it isn't. That's good enough for me. Let's get out of here. I must keep this gate locked. Around here, they still believe that Dr. Jekyll and the form of a werewolf prowls thirsting for blood every time the full moon rises. Every chance accident, every unexplained disappearance of man or beast is rumored to be his doing. I'm fed up with these old wives' tales. They're utter nonsense. I understand. I know how you feel. The atmosphere of this place would get anybody down. After what the doctor said. Forget the doctor. Oh, the old boy means well. But the sooner we're out of here and married, the better. George, I know you're right, but I can't make any... Not disturbing anything, am I? Oh, young lady, what you need is a good night's rest. I think you must let the doctor prescribe. Maggie, I want you to go downstairs and heat up a glass of milk for Miss Janet. Yes, sir. Now, you say good night, but make it quick. First thing in the morning, we pack. Second, a minister. duty upon myself. You'd have stumbled on the truth sooner or later. The shock might have been worse. I don't know. Maybe I was wrong. What does it matter? Oh, my dear, you mustn't try to fight this so hard. Look at me. Look into my eyes. I'm going to check your nerve reflexes. Watch the light. Watch the light closely. Sir, but the fire got out in the stove and I had to get it started and... Is she all right? She's just tired. She'll be fine in the morning, won't she, dear? Now you're going to have a nice long sleep.
drink your milk. Late. It will be up before I'm home. And only 24 hours before full moon. Full moon? That's when the monster Jekyll rises from his tomb. Hours ago. Maggie's in bed asleep by now. How are you sure? Why do you keep asking about Maggie? Oh, I saw something in a nightmare. I... That's all right now. <clears throat> Maybe just try and get some sleep. This is going to put you to sleep. Go on. Drink it.
I want to get Janet out of here today. Do you think she will really be in condition to travel? Well, it'll be rough on her, but not half as rough as staying here. Every time she looks out of her bedroom window, she's liable to go into another set of hysterics. And I don't blame her. The only thing I can think of is to get her out of here in a hurry. I suppose you're right. I blame myself for telling her about her father, but at the time... Good morning, dear. You've been keeping a nice hot breakfast waiting for Miss Janet, eh? Yes, indeed I have, sir. Sausages and eggs. Now, they always hit the spot, don't they? Now, my prescription is eat hearty. And after breakfast, we'll drive up to London after you've packed. I have an aunt who'll put you up until we can arrange for the wedding. I promise to be on hand to throw rice. How does that suit you? Well, I'm sorry, George. I can't make a decision. I'm not capable of it. Oh, I'm sorry to be late. But the first batch of toast got burnt. Just seems to be one of those mornings when nothing goes right. First, Jacob didn't show up, and I had to start the stove all by myself. And then Maggie is late. Oh, this is going to be one of those days. I just know it is. Maggie isn't here? Oh, no, but what can you expect of maids these days? Why, in my first place, would I have caught it if I were ten seconds late? But now they come bouncing in as they like, without so much as a by your knee. beasts of prey in this part of the country, not for centuries. Is there a circus or a zoo around here? What would have been in the times? It is no beast that did this. Leastwise, no natural beast. Only one thing did that. People around here know what it is. It's a werewolf. We've seen it before. Nonsense. Nonsense, is it? This isn't the first time we've had a monster around here. And people know what to do about werewolves. There's ways. That's enough. Get out! That's right. We've had enough of this nonsense. Get back to your work. Good day, Miss Jekyll. <laughs> Thing. How do you expect me to be getting dinner when you're two hours late with my chicken? <sighs> We've been drinking again. Just a pint of half and half. Who's to care? Oh, just a pint of half and half. Who's to care? You expect me to believe that one? Well, I'll tell you one thing. If Dr. Loomis finds you staggering about, he'll... Dr. Loomis. He's got troubles enough of his own to take care of. I'll tell you one thing. I've been talking to the boys down at the pub, and they don't intend to be putting up with no daughter of Dr. Jekyll roaming around. You'll mind your business if you know what's good for you. It is my business. It's everybody's business. First Maggie last night. Whose blood will she get tonight? What a wicked thing to say. Is it indeed? Well, let me tell you something else. Do you know what the lads are saying? They took care of the father, and they know how to take care of the daughter. You're just trying to stir up trouble with your wicked nonsense. So you think it's nonsense? Well, maybe. But I wonder who'll be next. Perhaps you. Now, don't worry. I'll be all right. You most certainly will, my dear. Here's the hot milk. I put some of our best brandy in. And I'm going to add another ingredient. How does that taste? 
All right. Take it down. Ah, that's good. Now we'll all leave and let you get some rest. After you've had a good night's sleep, you'll feel like another girl. Sleep tight. Doctor, you have the key. Don't worry, my dear. I'll lock you in snug and tight. Be sure. Best not to upset her. Oh, I wonder how much longer my nerves can stand this. A nightcap? No, I don't worry. I leave my door ajar. Doctors, you know, always sleep with one eye open. Good night. Good night, sir. Janet! It happened again. I knew it would. Look at my hand! Janet, what have you done? Killed. Killed like some beast in the night. Janet, you were locked in. The doctor was watching the door every moment. Weren't you, doctor? I must have dropped off for a few moments, but nevertheless... Janet, tell us exactly what you think you did. I killed her. I... I crept up like some animal. And then I had my hands around her throat and I... Janet, be quiet. <laughs> I have to be sensible. This is all nerves. My nerves? Do my nerves explain the blood in my hands? And the mud on my shoes? And my gown? This is ridiculous. We're living in the 20th century. This is an age of reason, not superstition. Now, now let's look at this calmly. Everything you've shown me has a reasonable explanation. Look at your arm. That's where the blood came from. You scratched yourself and tore your gown during your nightmare. We went for a walk today. That explains the mud on your shoes. Now, Janet, all that is left are a few bad dreams. But I saw myself kill her as clearly as I see you now. Could I have been sleepwalking? Impossible. You were locked in. The doctor locked the door and kept the key. When you screamed, the door was still locked. 
They could have used the window. Quite impossible. Are you sure? Absolutely. Not even a trained acrobat could crawl along that ledge or drop to the ground without injury. See for yourself. What are you doing here, intruding at this hour? We found Lucy. Found Lucy? What do you mean? You know what I mean. We found Lucy with her throat torn out. Torn out by her. I've had enough of this. Some maniac has broken loose, but I'll not have Janet accused of these horrors. Here, get out of this house, and don't let me see you in these grounds again. We know you're the daughter of Dr. Jacob. We know what you're doing. You heard him. Get out. Let me tell you something. It won't be long till the daughter of Dr. Jacob joins her father in the vault with a stake in her heart. We know how to deal with werewolves. Hi, Mrs. Merchant. What are you going to at this hour? I'm leaving. Oh, now, Mrs. Merchant, this isn't like you. Leaving without notice after all these years? I'm sorry, but there isn't an argument in the world that could get me to stay in this house another moment, let alone another night. There are some things that nobody should be expected to put up with. Oh, now, Mrs. Merchant, this is silly, really. Pardon me. I'll send for the rest of my things later. I shouldn't be too long. If anybody wants to start any mischief, I intend to squelch it before it gets underway. Now I must go and see if I can dig up another housekeeper. Can't we get Janet out of here by tomorrow morning? I don't see why not. Those pills I gave her should keep her asleep for another few hours. She seems much better. But don't go up to her now. We don't want to give her the impression that she must be watched. Better get some rest yourself. And remember, in case Janet gets a bit out of hand, give her not more than two of the pills I left with you. No, I won't. And don't give them to her unless it's necessary. I don't like to use too many drugs if it can be avoided. Well, I'm off now. Goodbye. Sometimes of a dead body, sometimes of a human monster, which quits either the dead or sleeping body by night to suck the blood of living persons. Hence, when the werewolf's grave is opened, his corpse is found to be fresh and rosy from the blood which he has thus absorbed. To put a stop to its ravages, a stake is driven through the corpse, or the head cut off, or the heart torn out and the body burned no. So you believe it? Of course not, Janet. Now, I want you to take some pills Dr. Lomas left for you. It's natural for you to be upset. Why don't you say it? I'm mad. You've got to do something. You've got to lock me up or put me in a madhouse. No. No, Jacob is right. He knows what to do. Got to get a stake and drive it through my heart and bury me beside my father. Well, do it! Do I have to kill myself? If you love me, please kill me! Please kill me! Please kill me! Please! Stop it! Stop. 
stop it. I'm, I'm sorry I had to do that. I'll, I'll take you up to your room. Give you those pills. Dr. Norma slept. Make you sleep. I've got to get Janet out of here quick. I'm afraid you can't. More trouble? Yes, I've had trouble too, and I'm afraid there's going to be more. In the village? Jacob? Mm-hmm. But surely nobody's going to listen to his superstitious gossip. I'm afraid they already have. I've talked that idiot of a village constable out of swearing out a warrant for Janet. But tomorrow there's going to be a coroner's inquest. And ridiculous as it is, they intend to summon Janet as a witness. But she's in no condition to face an inquisition. As a physician, that's what I intend to tell the coroner. If they want her as a witness, they'll have to postpone the inquest. Unfortunately, it still means that she can't leave. Well, then there's no reason to tell her about this now. Right. Well, I'm going back upstairs to her. If you want me, I'll be in the dining room. I need a drink. She's gone. Are you sure? I looked all over the second floor. The third floor and the, and the attic are locked off. She must have come downstairs. You look upstairs again. I'll take this floor. Any luck? No. Where the devil can she have got to? She can't have been out of your sight for more than three or four minutes. I thought the pills put her to sleep. Oh, individual reactions differ sharply. Well, we can't waste any time. She was talking about suicide. Oh, lots of people do. Mostly it's just talk. Come, the next thing to do is to search the grounds. Why did you come here? Something made me. I'd be better off beside my father. Janet, you've permitted yourself to become completely morbid. You mustn't let these ridiculous superstitions get the best of you. The doctor's right. I know you're going through a nightmare. But you have to fight it. George, directly the inquest is over tomorrow. I want you to take Janet away from here. Inquest? Oh, I'll tell you about that later. George, take Janet back to the house. Didn't I order you off my grounds? It's no harm I'm doing. Now, let me make this very clear. If at any time in the future I find you on this land, I'll have the constable take you in charge for trespassing. This is strong, very strong. That young lady would put an elephant to sleep. I want to be completely unconscious, unable to move. Well, you will be. I hope I'm not overdoing sedatives. They can have a nasty effect. I'll take the risk. Well, frankly, I feel like an idiot, but I've done what you've asked. All the windows are nailed shut. No one can get out? Not even a mosquito. Now, when you go, be sure to lock the door from the outside and keep the key. Oh, I'll do even better than that. To convince you how silly your idea is, I'll lock the door and I'll spend the night on that chair. 
No, I'll stay with her. Oh, no, you were up all last night. Two nights in a row aren't good. Besides, I've got about six months back numbers of medical journals to read. Off with you now. Now you're not going to have any more nightmares. Get a good sleep. Tomorrow will be off. Night, Princess. She's almost asleep. Mm, it's very strong. Now, on your way. And don't waste any sleep and worry. Tonight you will dream again. You are a werewolf. You will steal through the woods to a lonely house and kill a woman. Then you will cut yourself, rip your gown, and cover your face and hands with blood. With this cord, you will hang yourself over your father's grave in atonement. Now you will sleep. When you wake, you will obey.
is it? This is the telephone exchange. The constable has asked us to warn all subscribers that the killer is still at large. There is no need for panic, as the village men will be patrolling the woods. But it is thought advisable to bar your windows and doors. Hello? Are you there? Are you there? Please answer me. Don, listen to me. He didn't do any of those killings. It was a doctor. A doctor? He's mad. Worse than that, he, he changes into something that isn't human. Oh, but I saw myself. No, no, he hypnotized you, put you in a trance. He made you see those things. But the blood on my hands. The doctor. Just as he gave you that cord to hang yourself and, and arouse Jacob's suspicions to stir up the village. But my father. He used Dr. Jekyll in his earlier killings to gain control of the estate. He was trying the same thing with you for the same reason. Oh, no. no man could possibly do that. We're not dealing with a man. We're not dealing with anything human. And if we don't get out of here quick, we won't be dealing with anything ever again. You've got one chance. Lie down here. Act like you're still in a trance.
never prowl the night again. Are you sure? <laughs> Is the female of the species deadlier than the male? It will chill Frankenstein himself. The attack of the 50-foot woman on your Chiller Theater next Saturday night at 7.30. Chiller Theater next Saturday night, 7.30.